everybody. Thank you, guys. Welcome, Johnny. Hi. How are you, sir? I'm good. Good. Right on. Good. These chairs are small. I feel small. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Hey, how you guys doing? Good? Is this the... Did I just ask that? <laughs> Is this, th this is the first time in this? This is the first time in this facility because oh, okay. the, uh, the convention center is undergoing renovations for the next year. So oh, we're here gotcha. for this Up. show in September, and then we're supposed to be back in the convention center in 21. All right. Oh, yeah. Well, cool. Thank you guys for waiting. I'm sorry I'm late. I, tried, I just wanted to make sure I got through the line, you know? Um, and we did. We made it through. Good. Cool. Ready Good. to go. What <laughs> Obviously, a lot. I, I landed today. I came, you know, basically straight over here. Where'd you come from? Uh, well, I home. <laughs> I was in Los Angeles, but last night I was in Colorado, so I flew home. Oh my gosh! Packed, flew out this morning. So Colorado good. to home to here. Yeah. that's quite the quite the yeah. jump. Yeah. Well, we're glad to have you. It's been a while. Yeah. I'm, I'm happy to see you again. Yeah. Great well, to have good. you back. Thank you. Sorry, I'm crunching. I haven't mint. And I, no, I didn't eat. I didn't have a chance to eat yet. So. Oh, this, this is my, we'll have to get you <laughs> my some food, meal. Man. Oh, yeah. I think so, I have photo ops after this. Oh, gosh. It's gonna and be then well another signing. So <sighs> We got to get you some food. Nah. All right. Food. We got snacks back Over, there. Overrated. Uh, I saw that, but there's stuff I can't eat, really. Oh. Uh, so you what, guys look awesome. So how many of... Uh, have I met a few of you before? I've been to the other SAC animes before. So who has not met me yet? Oh, wow. It's very nice to meet you guys in, in this setting. Hopefully, I'll get to meet you guys over at the uh, tables. But uh, thank you guys for being here. So I guess we got some questions, huh? So I was, I was going to ask what you've been up to, but if you want to jump right into questions. Cool, yeah, let's cool, just cool. go right into questions. Right into yeah. questions. Miss. Yeah, there's so many things I'm not allowed to talk about, so. Oh, yeah. Oh. Is it on? You had one job. Hello? Oh, All right. hi. <laughs> All right. So... Hi. Hi there. I know I just met you. Yes, but, I know. Um, <laughs> um, so my question for you is just how was the experience with getting the role for Ichigo? And like, um, how did you get it? Um, well, oh, that's OK. That was a long time ago. <laughs> um, let's see. Uh, well, you know, they, I got called in for, the, for an audition. And uh, I had. Okay, so actually, I'll backtrack a little bit in my mind, but uh, so Naruto was coming out and somebody had told me that this studio was doing Naruto and that I should try to get in and do some auditions. And I didn't have an agent at the time. So I actually just called up the studio and I was like, hey, uh, I'm a voice actor, can I come audition for Naruto? And they're like, sure. <laughs> and they just like, you know, they don't do that. But they, they said yes and allowed me to come in. And I went in, you know, and there's a bunch of whatever. So I auditioned and didn't get any role. Um, and, then, uh, and then eventually they called me in and said, hey, we're doing this show uh, called uh, Bleach. And I want you to come in and audition for a few characters. So I went in and I, I knew. But see, I kind of knew about Bleach because of my drummer was watching it. And um, uh, I'd seen people dressed up as characters from Bleach. Um, and so when I went in, I knew Ichigo's character was like the main character. Um, and so I was, again, familiar with a few things that I'd seen my drummer watching, like, just before rehearsals. And so I knew some stuff about it. And so looking at the different characters, I auditioned for each of them. But, like, Ichigo was the one where I was like, man, I really got to try to nail this character down. Um, and then I remember going in. And uh, that, that one, they had, it was very, okay, so there's, I, there was only one other person in there uh, recording or there's like an engineer or whatever and the director and they're like alright so this is you know it's it's a Japanese show or whatever and I know that he sounds kind of rough punk kiddish or whatever but we don't know if an American audience will like that kind of an attitude so can you make him friendly and nice <laughs> and I was like okay but he's kicking somebody in the scene <laughs> um, and so I was like uh, alright I'll try my best and so I try to make him sound nice and friendly 
And, uh, but then there's like some fighting stuff in there and then I had to scream like Bankai and stuff and I was like, well that stuff, that, yeah, you can't make that sound friendly. And so anyways, I left that audition feeling like, that was weird, I don't know, I don't feel confident about it. And then so I had a callback, a second audition and then they brought me in they said, okay, so they really liked your Bankais but they felt like the other stuff was maybe too friendly, too nice or whatever. And I was like, well yeah, that's what you told me to do. Um, but then they're like, so can you find somewhere between so it's not too nice or maybe sometimes he's nice when he's talking to his sister, you know, but maybe not so much. And so it was, it was a balancing act to try to find out because I really didn't know. I was just shooting from the hip like uh, maybe this sounds right or feels right. Um, but then, yeah, I went, you know, did that. And then they said, yep, all right, you're Ichigo. And uh, they just threw me in there. Yeah. Awesome. Thank it was you fun, so though. It was a lot of fun for sure. That was a good, good series for me. And thank you for watching. Thank you for <laughs> voicing. And hopefully we get to finish it. <laughs> I'm asking all of you that really liked it if you really want it to be finished there's a petition I even signed it and, and, uh, and posted it on my Instagram or wherever but uh, yeah go sign it and let's see if we can get enough people that you know to prove it to them that there are people that like the show yeah hey there hi um, first off I just want to say thank you for com thank you for coming b back again Johnny it's been like quite a few years since you last attend the show on such so it has I don't know how, how many years has uh, it been? It's at least five. It's been at least yeah somewhere in there yeah for sure yeah. yeah. So so my question is it's more of a general one but uh, what I like to know is what was the journey like from when you first started voice acting to where you are now? What was the journey like? Mm. A lot of ups and downs. <laughs> a lot of you know I like getting some things and not getting. Hang on one second. Okay, good. I always feel weird at the table and like if my crotch is like eye level. <laughs> I always have to, I always need to make sure there's a, you know, I don't know, it's weird. I don't know why I think I'm just thinking that way, but like I feel vulnerable. Like my legs are crossed, you know. <laughs> I don't want to like basic instinct you guys. So that's, that's probably way before your time. You probably don't even know what that reference is. That makes don't, me don't feel look old, it up. Man. Never mind. Thanks. All right. Uh, yeah, a lot of ups and downs. Um, Things, I, I don't know, I, I really can't complain. I've, I've been able to work um, for a very long time in voiceover um, and see things, you know, some great things happen and some not so cool things happen. But, uh, you know, it, like anything in life, you know, you, you take the good with the bad, you know, or the bad with the good or anything. <laughs> All right. Thank I'm not you. sure if that's what you're looking for, but, you know, I don't. That, that's pretty good. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> that's good enough, Johnny. There, there you go. That's pretty good. That's, that's, I'll, I'll accept it, Johnny. <laughs> Hey Johnny, how you doing? Good. So I wanted to ask, what's the current status of this project that you're trying to do with Jason Dare Frank, the White Dragon? Oh, the White Dragon. Current status is we aren't. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, because well, we 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 did a Kickstarter, mm -hmm. and uh, we didn't reach the Kickstarter, um, and so it's kind of. Well, yeah, it's, it's hard. It's very difficult because like there's a lot of special effects and visual effects that go into it. And so the production company that we had, you know, hired said we need 500,000 to make it. And uh, and then we did a Kickstarter because if we did, we did, if we did GoFundMe, yeah, we could have kept the money, but I didn't want to do that. I wanted if we didn't reach it to, for it to just stay with everyone. And so we made, you know, it was like half of that. We raised half of it. But, uh, and so now it's kind of in limbo. I'm not sure if it's gonna happen. I know that really if enough people really want it to happen, we'll know. Um, and then you potentially will we'll start another Kickstarter. But really Kickstarter doesn't give you a lot of time. Like to raise that amount of money, um, you need to promote a lot. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm not really sure. I'm just not sure. I wouldn't be opposed to it. Yeah. Thank you, Johnny. Because yeah, you, you guys had already done the small movie for the Kickstarter, and it was you and Jason and Ciara. Right. And yeah, yeah, we had a few other Rangers in there. Um, and that's the other thing, is that it's walked a fine line with uh, Power Rangers and could easily get shut down. Copyright you know, and so. yeah. <laughs> Right. Right. So. Hi. Hi there. Um, so you've done a lot of work for a lot of different shows, and many of them have become very popular. But what is a show that you were in that didn't become as popular, but you think should have more attention to it? Wolf's Reign is one of them. Yeah. yeah. 
Um, yeah, Wolf's Reign for sure. Uh, Last Exile. Um, there, there's some shows like that that were like in the earlier anime time, you know, when things were starting to come that a lot of people I think kind of missed, you mm -hmm. know, or some people maybe saw, but, you know, it's, there wasn't enough merchandise or anything, you know. Um, but yeah, th th there's two of them right there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, Wolf's Reign really is great. If you haven't yeah. seen it, it's a wonderful one. All right. Thank you. Sure. And not great because I'm in it, but it's just great. <laughs> <laughs> you can watch in the Japanese if you want. It's great. Good afternoon. Hi there. My question is, when you came back to play Nero in Devil May Cry 5, did you have to do any sort of training to get back into the role since it's been considerably a long time since you played them back in 4? Yeah, no, we didn't. I mean, they made us audition. <laughs> they made us re-audition for the characters uh, because they were like, you guys are old now. And uh, we're like, we're not that old. What do you <laughs> talking about yeah it's you guys it took so long um, but no you can even ask Ruben but yeah we had to audition again um, but I don't know I mean we didn't have to really do uh, um, anything more than that just it was and it wasn't really like physical stuff because they just you know they're just they really wanted to see if we can get our characters back um, and I, I mean for me that character is very much me or at least at that time so it wasn't that far of a stretch it was easy for me to kind of just dive right back into the character especially since i mean i can't spoil things um i forgot that i can't spoil things yeah, not the good but idea. uh yeah because oh yeah i can't even talk about it never mind especially nothing that's okay <laughs> right. we can wait thank you sure. you got back into it <laughs> especially nothing that's a tweet uh, hi hi there uh, it's such like, a huge honor meeting you here. I've been following you since Persona 4. And, awesome. And Promare. Promare, uh, yes. Yeah. Promare's the one. Yeah, that, <laughs> that one is a lot of fun. Um, I don't know if you remember this, but you voiced Seto in Fragile Dreams. Yes, probably yeah. the most depressing, sad <laughs> game I ever worked on. Yeah. Uh, I just wanted to thank you so much for being in that game, because that game had a huge impact on my life. Oh, that's it changed awesome. The way I, you like things. Well, thank you. Thanks. And you did such a fantastic job voicing Seto. I appreciate that. Thanks for thank. Well, thanks for playing. Yeah. <laughs> um, I also just wanted to ask if you do remember um, what the process was like voicing Seto um, in his character. Well, I can't remember exact details, but I do remember there were a, a couple scenes that we we started off with that hit me emotionally and uh, and. And like really hard. And then when I learned, there's there's a story also with the director or the uh, or the writer, um, that or the the one who created the story that was really very sad and, and depressing as well. And uh, from there, I I would just kind of, it was easy for me at that point. And, and not, I mean, I don't want to sound like it's so easy, but no, it was it was easy for me to tap into the emotion um, when when I needed it. Uh, but I definitely enjoyed it. Um, and I was kind of bummed because that was one that I worked on that I really enjoyed and I feel like maybe not enough people played it at the yeah. time. Um, but I think people could have potentially liked it. That's the other hard thing about games is that you work on it, you do your absolute best and maybe what you've done feels good, but the actual, maybe the gameplay is not as cool. So I don't really know because I'm terrible at games. Um, like, I, I mean, I just play Pokemon Go, you yeah. know, here and there. And, I, and I'm Team Instinct. I'm, I'm like the only one on Team Instinct, so. <laughs> so, yeah. Two! All right! High five! Yeah. Five! Ooh, five of us. All right, there's five of us. Six. Hey, we're growing. <laughs> You'll see the six of us walking around. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, hi. Wow, hi. I'm really short. Um, so... For the Persona 4 anime dub, um, well, Narukami's really flat. Like he, well, he has a very deadpan sense of humor. Did you get to improv any of that, or was it scripted? You know, I, I well, I worked with Christy Reed. She was the director. So usually, w when when I work with her, especially in th those days, there was there was a bit of flexibility of like, you know. This, this line that was written is, isn't working. What can we do to fix it or whatever? She's, she's great. And so I'm sure there's, a, there's, there's some in there. I, I don't have anything specific that comes to mind, but I'm pretty sure there was, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome, yeah. Hello. Hi there. 
Uh, Power Rangers got me into martial arts. Nice. As of uh, April this year, I've been doing Aikido for 24 years. Holy moly, that's awesome. Uh, so I have a question. So um, you can throw some people around if they come charging at you. I guess. <laughs> <laughs> you, charge, no. Um, uh, that's awesome. How have you been able to use a martial arts in your uh, career outside of Power Rangers? Well, Devil May Cry. <laughs> um, I had to do a bit of martial arts in that. Um, <laughs> It, in my career. Or just in your life. <laughs> oh, well, plenty of times, <laughs> unfortunately. Um, yeah, I've, I've been in a few street fights, for sure. And not, I, haven't, I didn't start them. Are you recording this? <laughs> I didn't start them. You know, I usually try to finish them um, and avoid them. Avoid them if you can. That's bad. That's, yeah, you shouldn't get into fights. But I did. There, there are times when I got into fights. Um, and yeah, for sure, I had to use martial arts. But uh, usually, you know, when you have that, when you have that confidence of, you know, whatever, 24, 30 years in martial arts, that you don't have anything really to prove, you know. Um, but sometimes people will continue to, you know. I'll, I'll tell you a brief story. I won't go into details. But I was walking. This was a while ago, but uh, this was actually Blockbuster was around. Blockbuster video, you guys. Wow, that's that's old. Right? It showed uh, up in Captain Marvel. <laughs> for those of you that don't know what it is, <laughs> right? Yeah, <laughs> right. Um, but uh, so, anyways, I was in a parking lot with uh, a few friends, and we were going to Blockbuster Video, and we we're walking, and this this SUV comes peeling by, and nearly hits my girlfriend at the time you know who's my wife now but my girlfriend at the time and I was like whoa and then I was like what the heck and then like really speeding through this parking lot and then I just I watched them right because I was so angry of like they could have like they didn't care they didn't stop they didn't slow down nothing they just kept going peeling around this parking lot and parked right and they ended up started walking towards uh, the blockbuster too but as they were getting out out of the car I was staring at them like like this like what what are you doing you know and then they're like oh and there's like five guys you know that probably on something or whatever and he's like what what and then his buddies you know are like started to you know go like this and i'm like all right whatever and so we get in there we we get our video and uh i think i said something i said something you know not kind <laughs> like you could have run her over but i i chose certain words sir your driving leaves much to be desired <laughs> right <laughs> Darn you. <laughs> <laughs> and so I went inside the building. We checked out our video or whatnot. And then I don't know what they were doing at the time, but I thought they were heading towards the Blockbuster. And so we go and we get in our car. And uh, we, as we were in the car, and uh, my friend was driving, and we had someone in front, my, my wife, who was my girlfriend, was next to me, and then I'm sitting in the back seat, still just kind of like fuming. And I see now that this the drivers like going to the front of the car and then four of his buddies are going to the back of the car and now stopping us from moving and so I could tell that the guy in the front was the main guy and that these guys were like the whatever gonna follow whatever the leader was doing and so I got out of the car and I said okay let's do this and then he starts to take his shirt off right and so I <laughs> like you know like some people are like, starts to take his shirt off. So once he starts to go like this, I turn to his guys and I, I rush them and I start shoving them back because I know they're scared. And I shove them back and then I go over to him because he's got his shirt now over his face. <laughs> like a complete idiot. You know? And so I diffuse the situation. <laughs> Very quickly with that guy. You know? I mean, if you, let, let me just let you guys know, if you're going to get into a fight, don't take your shirt off. First off, it's it's just a it's just a show, you know. You're just taking your shirt off because like, oh no, you're taking your shirt off and you're gonna fight me. No, no, no. You're afraid, but you're trying to show that you're not afraid, and also stupid because as soon as you put that over your face, you're gonna get hit. I revealed something about myself. Glad <laughs> uh, you made it out of that. Right, right. But you know, I mean, yeah, yeah, you know. All right. I'm usually very, very level-headed, but in that moment, I was not. It happens. It's allowed. It does. It does. It's been a long time since I've been to a show. Yeah. Like, uh, I probably should tell a quarter story, that one. D did you ever hear the quarter story? I don't think I heard the quarter story. Who's heard the quarter story? Okay, a few people have heard the quarter story. 
Maybe I'll tell it. How much time do I have in here? Uh, you've got about another 25, 30 minutes. Okay. I'll answer a few more questions, but then I should probably tell this story. Yeah. Okay. Can't yes. have a buildup with no delivery. I know. Right. Right. Yeah, yeah. So, how do you feel about the evolution of Dante and Nero's character between DMC4 and DMC5? I, I dig it. I mean, for me, without spoiling things, there was something about the story that we hinted at in 4 that we never really got to come out and say that we finally came out and said in 5. So, definitely was excited about that. Um, yeah, totally cool. And hoping that it doesn't take another 10 years to get six. <laughs> That'd be awesome. <laughs> yeah. Although I, I, it was hard for me to get used to his hair at first. Yeah, I agree. The haircut, yeah. Hi, hello. Hi there. Okay, so what's one of the funniest moments that happened while you were in the recording booth? Oh, let me, I'll tell this one. Uh, okay, so it was, I was working on Wolf's Raid. And, uh, Highly yeah, underrated, see, I hear. Very few people have seen it. Highly underrated, I hear. Got, got one. Woo! All right, so, uh, so I was working on Wolf's Reign. Um, this was like, I think this is maybe the third anime that I worked on. So I was very new to the business. Um, and so the, the thing with anime is you don't get the script ahead of time you show up you know and then it's there and so I would try to get my thing was like I try to get there early so I can kind of find out where my character's coming from where I'm going so I can kind of figure it out you know for the scene um, but I was running late one day and so I skipped breakfast and drove to work at Mary Elizabeth directed this so I, I'm curious if she even remembers this story or this this happening but uh, and so I'm in the booth I hadn't eaten and we're working and uh, you guys know like when, like when you're in school and it's quiet, you're taking a quiz and your stomach's about to growl and how like you're like, you try to, well, I don't know, this is what I do. I, I'm like, <clears throat> you know, you tap things, shuffle things to try to make it growl in between the movements, right? Um, and so there's not a lot you can do in the booth because it's like a $3,000 microphone and preamps and all this stuff that picks up everything. And so I'm like, I don't know what to do because I feel this about to growl and I'm like, oh, I got a bottle of water. And so I just started down in water, right? And then it... It went away. I was like, oh, yeah, that works. And so I'm, I'm recording, and I continue to do the, uh, the work, and then every time I feel this growl about to happen, I just bloop, 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 I just take some water down, and it, and it shuts it up. Like, like a growly monster in my stomach. I'm about to growl. I pour water on his head. He's like, Rrr, and he goes away. And so it's working for a long time. It's working really well. <clears throat> but then out of nowhere, my stomach growls but it doesn't make a growl that's like or whatever and that can be like oh it's my stomach you know no instead it goes <laughs> so, so it sounded like i tried to squeeze out a silent fart but my butt cheeks were like nope <laughs> it was like Bruh. just like that and i could see mary and the engineer they both are like <laughs> in the window i could see them staring at me like did you just fart? <laughs> and I'm like, I didn't fart. You know, I'm thinking I'm not going to work in this town again for farting in the booth. I'm like, no, no, no. I, did, I didn't fart. That was really it was my stomach. And they're like, sure, sure, okay, yeah, sure. <laughs> and I was, like, no. I was like, no, you can come in and you can come in and smell. You can smell the air. It's not nothing. They're like, no, 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 no. Anyways, you should ask her. <laughs> but don't ask her, like, do you remember when Johnny farted in the booth? <laughs> What's the weirdest thing that ever happened while you were producing for Johnny Young? <laughs> yeah. Well, were there was that one time. Yeah, <laughs> where he farted in the booth. Uh, so anyways, that would be it. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, sure. <laughs> um, hi. Hi. I really love your... Okay, so my favorite roles from you are Lelouch and Artemis, which not thank people you. Be, apparently know that. But um, so yeah, I love those roles. My question for you is... What's your dream role that you could have that no matter, like, time, like, if it's already been cast, if it's in the past, like, what's your dream role? Oh, gosh. Um, yeah. <laughs> I went there. I don't, I don't know. Um, I feel like I've had a lot of, I've been fortunate enough to get a lot of dream roles. Um, you know, I think also I've been, I've been acting for a very long time. And so at some point... You don't, you don't dwell on, you, you don't think like that, you know, really. If you think, for instance, if you think like, oh man, I wish I had that, and you kind of keep dwelling, you're just gonna, you're gonna feel bad all the time. 
um, because you, you audition for hundreds of things, you know, and you don't get them. I mean, there's plenty of things that I've auditioned for that I definitely didn't get. Um, but uh, I can't dwell on it, you know, and I just kind of move on to the next thing and go, All right, what, what else is out there, you know? Um, so I don't know. I don't really have, like, something out there that I'm like, in that way. I don't, yeah, I'm not, I, I don't really have one. I, haven't, I don't think that way, unfortunately. Hmm. That's fine. So, sorry, terrible, terrible answer, answer for That's me. That's not a but. terrible answer. <laughs> That's an answer that actually makes sense. If you're happy with what you've been doing, then there's no worry about a dream role. So, thank you. No problem. Sure. Hello. Hey there. Uh, it's a great honor to have you here. Uh, I missed you the last time you were here, and I've been waiting ever since for you to come back. <laughs> um, I just want to ask you, my favorite Ichigo moment is the we're going to need five ambulances when, you're, when he's beating up all the thugs to save Chad. So I was wondering if you had a personal favorite moment as Ichigo. Uh, best uh, Ichigo m uh, favorite moment. Um, oh, there's a lot. There's a lot of moments that I enjoyed. I enjoyed, there, you know, there was something earlier on, like uh, earlier episodes when he had this thought of his mom. And I think he was like walking in the woods or something. He starts to break down a little bit. Um, that, I connected to that character at that moment. And then it was like, I know this guy. I know this guy 100%. And so... That for me was one. Um, when Haluichigo first started to be appear with that, the fight with Byakuya, mm -hmm. you know, that, and I didn't even know I was going to be voicing, you know, Haluichigo or White Ichigo, however they had him written down in the script. But I didn't know until that day I show up and, and I was like, oh, who's voicing White Ichigo? And Wendy Lee was like, you are. With the <laughs> synthesizer. Yeah, so, uh, but uh, yeah, there's a lot of moments, you know, meeting Kenpachi for the first time, that fight, that was kind of cool, you know. Um, a lot of cool moments in there for me, you know. It's a great series. Thank you for voicing it. It's Thank fantastic. you. Yeah. <clears throat> Hi there. Hello. Um, so I wanted to ask, uh, for fledgling voice actors trying to find tips and tricks online, um, there are a lot of them that seem kind of redundant. They've kind of overlapped and become common, common knowledge for me. Uh -huh. um, I wanted to ask, is in your experience? what is the most powerful tip you could have been given uh, getting into your first audition that if you were to stroll up to your you know, previous self on your very first audition to just say the one thing that would make this whole, whole process a lot easier? The magic word, huh? Yeah. The magic one thing that's going to make it work. There isn't one. <laughs> there, there isn't one. There's nothing I could, t I could have told myself. Um, it's, it's a learning process. You know, there are some of those things that, you're, that you have heard over and over again. Some of those things are true. Yeah, everybody has different secrets. I have my own secrets um, that as soon as I'm, I quit voiceover, I'll reveal them. Um, <laughs> yeah. but, uh, yeah. but like Steve Bloom, he teaches, you know, and he's got a whole thing going. So, I mean, I would recommend someone like that who is like ready to to share his secrets and things What's like that. What's his name again? Steve Bloom. He's here. Yeah, he's this, here. He's, he's, he's got a cards very that is, big uh, voice actor. Yeah. Uh, it's a Bloom box. Yeah, it, uh, I would definitely go to his Q&A and be like, hey, where do I sign up or whatever. Seriously, I would recommend him. Um, and it, he would have great advice as well, too, you know, um, because he's been answering questions like this, you know, um, and I, I occasionally get a, a question like this, but I don't know that there, there really isn't, I may, unless he's figured out a magic word, because there's nothing I could have told myself, you know, because there were a lot of different things. For, first off, I'm, I'm more of a, like an, I'm an introvert, you know, and yeah, w when I'm here, I'm maybe not so much because, because you guys help me not be that way, you know, but I am definitely, like after a con, for me, I, I have to decompress. I have to have like this time where I'm, I'm sitting by myself in my studio and I'm just, I don't do anything, you know, just to re-energize. Whereas other people can go in front of like a bunch of other people and energize that way, I, I can't, you know. Um, so, yeah, I, I, I know that there's nothing I could have told myself. There were a lot of different things that I had, had to get over. I had to get over shyness and being afraid. There are many times, like sometimes I would, Thundercats, I went and auditioned for Thundercats and I was like excited. I was like, oh my gosh, I grew up on Thundercats. And, and, and there's this kind of weird excitement and nervousness that kind of like mixed in. And then I remember when I was in on that audition and as I was doing the lines, I'm like, you're screwing this up completely. 
you know, and, and there's nothing I could have done, you know. Um, and I'm like, and I, this was at the point where, I mean, I had done a ton of voiceover. But I had this weird thing that, I, you know, just because I'd known it and I psyched, my, I psyched myself up a little bit because I thought it's a big project. And that was kind of, you know, it wasn't that long ago. Um, but uh, you, you do, you kind of have to build this, uh, I guess, thick skin, really. And you just go in, you do your absolute best. No, if it's Spider-Man or whatever, you do your absolute best. But don't think much about it, you know? I think there's somebody else, you know, I always think of this, and it's a weird thing that I heard on the radio at some point, that some actor does this when he auditions. I've never done it, but he puts like a slice of bologna in his underwear. Uh, that's Glenn right. Morshower. Is that is that right? Actor's name is Glenn Morshower. He yeah. played the general in Transformers. He does a lot of military roles. He's done baloney, peanut butter in his shoes. Yeah. yeah. So he does True things story. like that so that it's like he's got a secret that you don't know. The good old, the good and, old baloney trick, yeah. And it works. And I think about it all the time. Like, I do. I've never done it, but I think about it all the time. Like, you know, baloney in my underwear. That's so weird. You know, but I have not done it. Um, I don't feel like I have needed to. Um, but try it. <laughs> Put some Cheetos in your pockets or something weird, you know? I don't know. Maybe, maybe that'll help, you know, to kind of like take, even just take your mind off of what you're doing, you know? I, I really don't know. But, uh, yeah, I know. I, maybe I'm just rambling. I don't know. I just don't have a magic word. No, this, this helps. Yeah, it's okay. good. I mean, okay. you can't really, like, summarize all the stuff in a single word. It's kind of like... Yeah, right. And it, it's really just practice. Yeah. Even, even like with my band and just going on stage, over, we have to rehearse. If you want to be like a professional athlete, you have to practice like a professional athlete. You want to be a professional voiceover actor, you have to practice like a professional voiceover actor. You know? And then at some point, you will just be one, even if you've never done any voiceover. There, there you go. There's some words. They're not magic, but... <laughs> What well, was your favorite time being the Power Ranger? Which season? I, you know what? It, I've had, I had a great time throughout, really. Um, getting the role was really awesome, you know? Um, that was something... I mean, I wanted, to be a, I wanted to be an action star. I was a martial artist, and I wanted to do this stuff on TV. I grew up in Texas, you know, and, uh, you know, I would train every day. My friends would come over, and they'd have to wait for me to finish my <laughs> training. Um, and, it, like, if I'm at home, even training, you know? But... Um, yeah, it was just something I wanted to do. And I remember, um, you know, once I went through the whole process, you know, or even going to the audition, my friends said, uh, dude, we, guys like us don't make it. We don't make it. You need to get, you know, a real job. Start thinking about a real job. And I'm like, yeah, I know I will. But if I don't go to this audition, I'll regret it forever, you know? Uh, and so, you know, long story short, I went, auditioned, and got it. Um, I'm going off on a, a total different tangent, but I started to think about this as I was talking about it. But there was a guy I met about a year ago, um, <clears throat> came to my table, and I told this similar story of you know, how you know, I found out about it and went to this audition or whatnot, and my friends tried to tell me not to go and don't waste my time, but I still went. He said he saw in the newspaper, so I saw in the news, or not me, but my instructor saw in the newspaper that they're looking for new Power Rangers, and he said, you should go give it a shot. So I went and auditioned, right? Um, and so this guy also saw this ad in the paper and then he thought in his head nah, I'm not gonna be able to do it and so he didn't even try you know and so and he told me that story and I thought man if he tried maybe he would have had the role instead of me you know but also like for any of you that if there's something that you want to do but there's that thought in your head it's that's what's stopping you it's that first thought in your head that's like oh you're gonna embarrass yourself you're going to screw up. Yeah, you will. You will definitely screw up. For sure. You're going to mess up at some point. Maybe not that time. You will eventually mess up. I do it all the time. But you have to give it a shot. You know, if it's something you really want to be or do, you got to start going in that direction. I mean, you keep your eyes open because something else might pop up. But, you know, I, I went off on a total different tangent from your question. But, you know, I, I really believe that, you know, if there's something you want to get or do, you got to realize the things that are popping up in your head. They could be voices from your friends or your family or whatever, you know, and it's not always a thing that they're trying to shut you down or be mean to you, but like they, they care about you, but maybe that negativity is starting to become something that you don't really need, you know? Okay, thank you. No problem, sure. Yeah. So what is the quarter story? So anyways, <laughs> uh, quarter story. No, John. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> Thank you. Um, all right, so the quarter story. All right, so when I, when I go to work, it, it's about like, you know, I live in L.A., so it's like, it's really like 45 minutes to maybe an hour and a half sometimes to get to work. But anyways, I have to take the freeway. Um, and so when I come home, uh, there's, there's an off-ramp that I take, and there's a signal light at the end of this off-ramp, and then I make a left to go under the overpass, and then I can head, head home. Um, so, uh, and so, and so whenever I would exit, like there's that corner there where the light is, there's always been like a homeless guy standing on the corner. Not the same homeless guy, but just homeless guys standing on the corner. And uh, I don't have an issue with giving homeless people money, but like in my car, it feels weird because I'm strapped in, you know, and they can, I don't know, jack me or something. I don't know. Right. So I never gave money while in my car. It just, it never felt, un never felt comfortable. So this one day, I exit the off-ramp, and um, there's about four or five cars in front of me. So me to maybe the middle of the room, right? Four or five cars in front of me. It's a red light. I pull up, stop, and behind me pulls up this monster truck. And it's towering over my car. And whoever's in there is, they're ready to go because all they're doing, they're revving their engine, right? So constantly like, <laughs> so I'm feeling the vibration of this monster truck just like go through my car. And I start to get this like, this panic going, you know? And I start to think like, as soon as that light turns green, bing, monster madness, <laughs> and he's going to run us all over, right? And so I have this weird panic in my head, like, man, as soon as that turns green, we need to go because this person is ready. And, uh, and meanwhile, I have this uh, Ziploc bag left over from uh, lunch full of carrots, and I'm scarfing them down like my last supper. And I eat these carrots, you know, and I look over, and I see a homeless woman standing on the corner. Before then, always just some uh, uh, homeless guy, but a homeless woman this time. And probably one of the first times that I've seen a homeless woman, really. And I was like, man, my heart just went out to her. And, I, and it was like, this could be your mom, Johnny. You know, what would you do if that was your mom? You know, so I, I felt like I should do something. And um, I just ate all these carrots, you know, and now I have an empty Ziploc bag. And in L.A., I'm not sure if it's like that here, but in L.A., you have to pay for parking everywhere. So my cup holders are full of quarters. And I thought, you know what? I'm going to give her all my quarters. And so I cleaned out my cup holders. I put them in the Ziploc bag, and I'm like, it's like three pounds worth of quarters. You know, I don't know how much money this is, but it's a lot. She's going to go and she can change her life. Maybe this is their step towards, you know, I don't know, getting a shower. I don't know. So I roll down the window. And I haven't done this before in my car. So I roll down the window and I hold out this bag of quarters like this. And I look at her. And again, she's like, you know, to the middle of this room, four or five cars in front of me. She sees me. She has a sign and she goes like this. She sets her sign down and she goes. And I was like, huh? Um, am I supposed to get out? I was like, I don't, I can't throw that far. I don't, I, I don't know what, aren't you supposed to come get it? I, I'm like trying to like communicate, but she's like so far away. <clears throat> and I'm like, how, how, do I, how do I get this to her? I, I don't know what to do, you know? And I'm like in mid confusion when the light turns green. And the car's in front of me because I think this guy is revving the whole time. They take off, you know, they start going. So me also instinctively, I just start going. You know, and I'm like this, boom, and I'm like, now I'm like driving towards her, and I look down, I'm like going 20 miles an hour with a three-pound bag of quarters. The monster truck is right on my tail, so I can't stop, and I'm like, wait, how's this exchange going to happen? You know, I don't know what's going to happen now. I, can I just like hit her in the gut with it like a football player? She's like, I got it. Now, I don't know what to do. You know, what if she hangs on to it too long, and then I pull her under my car, and I kill her? You know, what if I hang on to it too long, and I get pulled out, and I die? So I'm like freaking out, and I don't know what to do. <clears throat> but then I get this moment of clarity this epiphany, and I'm like, Johnny, you're a martial artist. Focus. <laughs> you're also Asian. Do the math. <laughs> 20 miles an hour, three-pound bag of quarters. All you have to do is go, uh, and watch it gracefully land into her hand. So there I was, 20 miles an hour, three-pound bag of quarters. Now. <laughs> and I release. Now, if you've ever been in an accident, <laughs> time... Time slows down. And uh, I say this all the time, but I feel like, you know, God's upstairs going like, bah, 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 bah. Ooh! oh, <laughs> Jesus, Moses, bring some popcorn and nachos. <laughs> we got to watch this one. Yeah, in slow motion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm recording it. We'll play back when he's dead. <laughs> so there I am, right? 20 miles an hour, three pound bag of quarters, waiting for the right moment. And I release now. And I watch as this three-pound bag of quarters flies through the air, 
three pounds worth of quarters at 20 miles an hour. Three pounds of quarters at 20 miles an hour. Fly through the air and smack her in the face. <laughs> the bag rips open, quarters fall, glistening in the sunlight as she goes down. Quarters go everywhere. And all I can do is this. No! <laughs> I'm going so fast that I actually screech around the corner like a drive-by quartering. She goes down. There was nowhere for me to turn around to see if she's okay. And so I just kept driving home. <laughs> Feeling dirty. So, true story. <laughs> I know it makes you think less of me, but... Uh, True story. Um, I don't know what happened to her, but like I said before, on that corner, there's always been a homeless guy standing on that corner, random different men, whatever, standing out. The first time there's a homeless woman there. After that day, no homeless people stand <laughs> on that corner. I am not joking. After that day, no homeless people are on that corner. <laughs> I don't know if she died. If I should leave like a, a white cross and a little bag of quarters? I mean, in my head, I imagine like there's a, a bridge somewhere and a barrel fire and a guy like standing there. Another guy walks up. Hey, Ted, what's up? Hey, where's Sally? Well, you didn't hear? <laughs> She's dead. Some guy killed her with quarters. I have no idea. No idea what happened. But if there's a lesson to be learned, kids, don't give homeless people money while driving your car. Yeah, sad. It was sad. It was so sad. It was a bad day for me. No! Uh, and the funny thing is, you know, you know, like, uh, like I don't know if your parents were ever, like, uh, if they were in war or in Vietnam or whatever, and, you know, they, they, they talk about, like, still remember yeah, the yeah. face of the person I killed. I remember her face. <laughs> exactly. I remember her face exactly. I don't think she's dead. But, uh, yeah, she, right. she probably does. She probably has like PTSD when <laughs> someone gives her quarters. <laughs> She's like, <gasps> <laughs> right. Boy, well, hey, uh, thank you guys so much for being here. I hope that you have a great weekend. Um, Give it up for Johnny, thank everybody. You guys. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you very much for being here. Thank you. For